Uh, Bayonet 2, one of uh, eight games to only uh, have achieved the 10 out of 10 on GameSpot.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, you and you uh, wrote some reviews for those games. In fact, you're the only two people left in the building who... Um, who written any tens? Of those eight, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah. You were number one with Ocarina, right? I was, yeah. 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 Ocarina of Time ended up being the first ten. Uh, at that time, we were a video game spot, so okay. we, were, we were the separate crew that hid in the back and used the word <laughs> hella a lot. And then GameSpot was PC-focused and, and very much like, what are these animals doing here? Um, so when I came back after a... So they, they sent Ocarina on a... Friday and the review could run Monday, so okay. I got the cartridge, went home. Did you did sleep? It. No, I, a little bit. Uh, that, that is, there's actually, I think the, that experience was documented on the site in oh, text really? form somewhere. Weirdly enough, um, and wanted to give it a ten, and basically uh, that led to a conversation that was probably about an hour long with uh, Vince Brody, who was one of the founders of mm. Gamespot. And he was the one who was in charge of all editorial. Um, the three founders of GameSpot were kind of like, they were, they were focused, like Vince was editorial, yeah. uh, Pete was kind of the tech, and then John Epstein was business. Vince, so was it Vince just was, you and him having the job? Yeah, yeah, he called okay. me into his office and basically just tried to poke holes in it over and over again in a way that at the time I thought was actually really frustrating because mm -hmm. it, it, you know, he was saying like, this game doesn't have voice acting. How can you say the sound's a 10? This is when we were scoring on component scores. So it was, what was this? This sound, was graphics, game? gameplay, sound, uh, value, and reviewer's tilt. Woo! Uh, which makes, per per reviewer's tilt actually made perfect sense. Mm. Uh, it's not worth it. It's not going to end up worth getting no. into. Um, and so he just sat there and kind of poked holes like, wouldn't it be better if it had voice acting? Wouldn't it be better if it had this? And I was like, well, you know, the standards of the console, all this other stuff. Like, if, if these are the policies that we review by, mm. absolutely not. This is a sound 10 all the way. Uh, and he kind of grilled me on it for a while, and then at the end of it went, <clears throat> all right, if that's what you want to do, <laughs> which was actually the worst thing he could have said. Like, fuck, God damn it. Um, but yeah, we ended up going through and, and giving it a 10. Um, the thing that always happens, uh, I was really excited when I saw the 10. It was the first 10 since I've been working at GameSpot. Mm -hmm. And I always remember, like, there was just always backlash. There's always a part of the community who just fundamentally thinks, this one was better in the series, or yeah, yeah. You, you run into stuff like that, but I think you know the, the thing we ran into in the early days was that the word under ten said perfect, right? And yeah, so okay. it was it was it wasn't necessarily about other games. It was just about no game's perfect. Mm. Any game could be better. Like so even today, like, people have referred to it as the perfect score, which is kind of yeah. Like, and I know. think since then, like we you know like when we redesigned the scoring system on GameSpot to remove the component scores and all that other stuff, at that time we took perfect off of it mm. and made it say prime instead which you know it was it was the best word we could come up with yeah. at the time i guess but uh uh you know the the idea you know and, and we had to justify it in a way and saying like you know it ended up saying like it's as perfect as a game can be by today's standards mm. and you know it's like it was like a, a back explanation for it that worked well at the time but uh, eventually, yeah, like moving it to Prime and, and saying like, you know, yeah, you're right, no game can ever be perfect, but like, who stopped this? Yeah. This is a dumb argument, uh, was, was the right move, I think. Uh, next game up was Soul Calibur? Yeah. Who did totally that one? With that. I want to say that was a James Milkey review. Okay. Was that in-house or freelance? It was in-house, in yeah. He was in-house at that point. He, he came out, uh, I think he was doing user reviews for us. And oh, we wow. Brought, we brought him in. Um, and, and so he was with the site for a while, and I want to say he... he Reviewed that and gave that a ten. You agree with that, Dan? Oh, 100 percent. It's like top five games of all time for me. Did you start doing user reviews as well, Kevin? Yeah, that's actually uh, kind of how I got into GameSpot. Was I did user reviews and I was a, a moderator on the site for years. So. We had a pretty hot pipeline for a while of mm. hiring people out of the community. Carolyn as well. Yeah. Carolyn came from the community. I yeah. kind of was involved in the community, came but the yeah. Community. Yeah. yeah, came in at a different angle. Uh, Chrono Cross. Yeah, <laughs> Chrono Cross. This is probably the one that comes up a lot. Uh, it, I mean, no, because who talks about <laughs> Chrono Cross in this day and age? That one was uh, that one was interesting uh, because it was freelanced out. Uh, so it was someone who was not on staff. Mm. Uh, you know, we were paying someone, paying some mercenary out there to to review the game for us, and uh, it came back a ten. And it was the sort of thing where it's like, okay, now we're kind of in a bind because no one on staff has played this game. No one can vouch for it one way or the other. Uh, Which is kind of what happened with Bayonet, actually. But we'll get into well, that yeah. in a second. Yeah, so yeah. you end up in this situation where you're like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I, I tr tried to kind of, I, I remember trying to poke kind of holes in it, the mm. Vince Brody way to some extent. Um, but it got to a point where it's like, okay, we, we kind of need someone else to, to vouch for it. So we went to another freelancer that was on our staff that had also played it and said, like, 
what do you think? You think this game's a ten? Uh, and the response was, oh yes, absolutely. Mm. Uh, so like, okay, well, we're we're gonna go through and, and give it a ten. So how I remember it going down is is the review got published, it was live, and then I responded and said, all right, it's it's up now, and you know that's the that's a perfect game. Here and then go. the response from the guy that uh, we had check it said. Oh, I never said it was perfect. Oh, like, no. Fuck no. <laughs> <sighs> Killer. Instant remorse on that one. <laughs> so, how did you feel then going up with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3? That was number four. Uh, that game's incredible. Yeah. That game is still amazing. Yeah. Uh, Tony Hawk 2 got a 9.9. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go from there? Not that it was about yeah, that, yeah. but you know, uh, if you look at Tony Hawk 3 on the PlayStation 2, they had, that game had online in it before they had issued the, the official network adapter. Oh, wow. So, you know, you could plug in like a weird USB Ethernet adapter and play online, like, you know, like the, the length they went to in that game. Um, and they completed the scoring system by adding <clears throat> Revert and all that other stuff. Mm. Like, like oh, Tony yeah, Hawk 3. Tony Hawk 3 was where they yeah. finally linked it all together. And yeah. it looked amazing at the time. That Tokyo level had the round bowls mm. and the cool sound effects and stuff. Great like, soundtrack again. Yeah, yeah, yeah terrific soundtrack. Mm. Like, I know a lot of people go like, oh, two's better. They're wrong. I th I, I, would, I thought the consensus was They're that three wrong. was three peak Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Two, was, two. two was great. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like four gets into an area where it's like now it's kind of like larger areas yeah. and stuff. Like they started getting away from, and they have to. Like obviously they they can't just mm. put out the same game again. <laughs> that's, that's the Activision of today, not the Activision <laughs> of then. Um, and so they should just put Bam Margera in Call of Duty and yeah. Fix, uh, Bam Margera is playing a concert in my hometown at the end of this month. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. Concert? I don't know what yeah. that means. His name is just on the marquee. He's have you a, seen? He has his... a shitty band. Oh yeah. Oh, have you seen oh, his stuff? oh. yeah. Oh, it's but really. Of course, like just Bam Margera shows up with an accordion and starts. You know, it's just like, it's, like it's, hey, what's up, guys? Oh right. Yeah, and yeah. then I think it's like electronic music, and he sings over it. Oh, that makes sense. It's actually what it Is it just like is he in a hymn cover band? That would make too much sense. His girlfriend, as I understand it, is from my hometown, so he, okay. he, is, he is there a fair amount. Um, anyway, yeah, Tony Hawk 3 uh, is incredible, and anyone that disagrees is actually completely wrong. Wow. If, if you think Tony Hawk 2 is a better game, you're fucking wrong. That was 2001, uh, then it was seven years until the next one. Wow. Uh, which, and this one is quite contentious as well. It was Grand Theft Auto 4. Grand Theft Auto okay. 4, yeah. With yeah. Justin Calvert, um, uh, gave a review of that. I completely agree. I absolutely adore GTA 4, but I know that I'm probably in the minority on that. No, one. GTA 4 is an amazing game. Yeah, I think I agree with every one of these except for Chrono Cross so far. Oh, really? Yeah. These are some of the best games of all time. Mm. That when 4 came out, it was like legitimately incredible. Like I remember... GTA 4? Yeah, 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 of course. That was interesting. I mean, because I, because then I was here by this point, and it's actually mm. interesting because we'd had, we'd had 10 submitted before, but then they never... Jason Ocampo yeah. wanted to give Half-Life 2 a 10. Oh, yeah. And we oh. said, no. <laughs> and he wanted to give um, Crisis a 10, if the first I recall crisis? correctly. The first Crisis. I think he wanted to give a 10. I like Crisis. Um, so I'm not so sure about it. But Half-Life 2 is a good shout. But, uh... Oh, God damn it. But GTA 4, I think... We were, we were actually uh, going back and forth, because at that point we had the, the .5 increments and everything. Yes. Up, and then... So it was like, okay, so is it a 9.5 or is it a 10? 9.5, 10, 9.5, 10, and we ended up landing on the 10. Actually, it was 9.5 on PS3, and it was 10 on 360, I think. Was it? I yeah, one think. of them wasn't 10. Well, I know that we gave the PC version a 9. Okay. Um, when that came out, but we did give GTA, it was the first 10. It was in years and years. And then the same year, we gave yes, my another, 10. Another four. Um, maybe the most content. It might be actually the most contentious 10. I'd love to hear what Riker has um, to think about this one. Which, uh -oh. Oh, oh, really? Uh oh, I don't know uh, what we're going to say. Is Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so a <laughs> yeah. game that I stand you by. You prefer as three, just... right? I, I think there's an <laughs> argument for any one of the four. The yeah. official yeah, Metal Gear Solids, you can argue for any one of those four being the best. I fucking love Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm -hmm. And when it's we. Awesome. Yeah, it's when we did awesome. our uh, yeah. MGS insane. retrospective a couple years ago, and I got the chance to, I, you know, just pulled that out and started playing. I was like, oh, God, this is so right on the money for that. And I was so, it's still, I really stand by that. I mean, there are a few mm. reviews. We all always have those couple reviews that are just like, yeah, maybe in retrospect, I was a little, a little excitable over that one. <laughs> but, man, I will stand by that 10 just as much as I stand by that 9 for the original Assassin's Creed. Were you, like, nervous <laughs> at all being, like, from the community and knowing the importance and, like, you know, were you nervous at all that, like, you weren't sure if this was that type of game. Like, what's no. the what's the mindset there? <laughs> I mean, the, no, honestly, the, when so one of the, the kind of the, the last big things I did at Gamespot was kind of write that review system <clears> rewrite <throat> to <throat> go from the component score system down to the half points and stuff. God, I was so bold even then. And the I originally actually wanted to go five stars with that stuff, and, yeah. and you know we've kind of decided on on a middle ground with that stuff and. 
by design, that should make tens easier to give. You yeah, know, we took perfect off of it. Like it, it wasn't designed to make scores higher. It was designed to be like, you know, let's just put the power back in the editor's hands, get away from this mathematical formula that, that makes less and less sense as we add more reviews yeah. to the site. So that was when all the reviews tilt and game Yeah, and like that stuff kind of went yeah, away yeah. and was replaced by that emblem system that I thought was cool. Uh, I, remember, I, I miss emblems a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Uh, it was it was the the case where the the original idea behind emblems was that we were, we were supposed to be able to add them on a really regular basis as games changed, and then getting the design resources to do that proved to actually right. be a completely different story. So I remember hearing uh, from Ryan Mack that sometimes when you submitted that the algorithm wasn't known, so when you hit like publish with all those that you didn't actually know what the final score was going to be down to the decimal. We had, uh, there was a, uh, an engineer named Clovis Audison who was, was there. Name. Yeah, and he was, uh, he made a spreadsheet for me that had the math in it. Okay. Uh, so it was like gameplay times point three, and you know, it was just like whatever, it was a weighted formula. Yeah. So gameplay mattered the most. Gameplay and reviewer's tilt were equal. Uh, value and graphics, I want to say, were equal, and then sound was the lowest. That's great. It's like yeah. Sevat Yearly made the review. Yeah. So it, it ended up being <laughs> that every true, every time you moved reviewers tilt up a point, it added 0.3 to oh, the overall right. score. Um, and so the one thing that did happen is that the rounding that the site used was different than the rounding the spreadsheet used. Right. So you would enter something that would come up 8.7 and put it up and it'd be an 8.6, and you'd be like, no, whatever. And then the video um, reviews had to be like redone. I heard because they'd been put up. Well, with by like that by that by the time we were doing video reviews, like the the ability to preview stuff on the site was a little bit a little bit better. But um, the thing that would happen is like oh, oftentimes as part of the peer review process of everyone reading the review and commenting on it, mm. you would see a score change a little bit here and there. Uh, based on those conversations, people be like, "You say the value is an eight, but when I read this, it sounds like a four yeah. or, or a seven or something." You know, so <laughs> like those, all those tweaks would happen. And those conversations still happen. Like one of the oh, things yeah. that maybe people don't aren't aware of, and I didn't, I kind of didn't appreciate until I joined three years ago, was the amount of peer review that happened. So every review, like basically, gets sent around every single editor on staff and is scrutineered almost. Yeah, I mean traditionally. I mean, when I started, it goes to copy edit first, is, is how it was done before. We don't have a copy editor right now, mm. but um, we go to copy edit first, and then it, was, it goes back you know, to the editor, puts in all the changes, puts it into the system. I and mean, we used to have a, a department that actually then entered those into the CMS. That was a really, that was great. Laborious way of doing it, yeah. But uh, now, I mean, we just, you know, but, but then it goes around to the entire editorial team, and everybody gets to chime in. And let me tell you, there. If people think that we just lazily throw stuff up onto the site, I think Bayonetta went through three rounds of QA. Oh I was yeah, on the emails for I like... mean there are reviews that we've delayed for almost a week. Yeah, um, and there have been times I've a couple reviews I've killed um, in the past just because it, it didn't it just didn't get to where it needed to be. Like too or, divisive or just the... no, just that it wasn't written well or didn't argue the score right. or that multiple rewrites didn't really get there and uh, you know there have been a few times where we've reassigned based on stuff like that. But. Crazy. Uh, number seven was uh, Super Mario Galaxy <clears throat> 2. Oh yeah. Uh, which was Tom McShay, right? Yes. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a fun conversation. I mean typically what these meant when you know when when I was you know after you know when when uh, Justin was was kind of in charge of this stuff. Mm. It was all of us gathering into Justin's office and like for an hour, two hours, whatever, and throwing around every single pro and con, ma letting, making the reviewer really argue the point, you know, being devil's advocate whenever it made sense. Um, and I'm very good at being a devil's advocate. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, SMG2. Galaxy 2, it's a pretty great video game. What'd you say? Oh really? Tom originally submitted that as yeah, a nine probably five. Yeah, probably as a ten. Yeah, he. I don't think this is a ten. Yeah, this game's. I mean, actually, I would say it's pretty close to if if something can be called perfect. Yeah. Like I'd say that's that's a game that really kind of deserves to be thrown into that category. Zero complaints about this game at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that was number seven. Then number eight. Uh, we had to wait a couple of years, but uh, Bayonetta two. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're kind of in a situation there where we have a, it went from, you know, I remember growing up w reading like uh, old Amiga magazines and actually PC Gamer had, until, until a couple of years ago, had the 100% like yeah. scale where it was everything from zero to 100. Um, GameSpot was on the sort of 20 points for, uh, no, it was like individual increments. So well, that's we were 100 100 it was 100 well. points yeah. and yeah. then when, when we changed it, it was technically 19 points because the lowest score was 1.0. Oh, you couldn't get a... Uh, you couldn't get a zero or yeah. a 0.5 or whatever it was. That's why... Um, uh, 
big rigs over there is a, yeah, a, a 1.0. 1 1 they, yeah. they managed to get it in a box and put it out. That's <laughs> close enough. Um, yeah, so so we changed it to that that scale. And then now, what, I, don't, I don't actually know what you guys did. Yeah, so it's 10 point now. So it's essential now. Yeah, top, yeah. yeah essential is the, the, the term. And obviously, the you kind of, that's pretty prime. when you formed Giant Bomb, you kind of got your own way to the five star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did the thing I wanted to do and just made a five star scale at that point. That, like Which uh, I actually uh, made the argument that GameSpot should have moved to that when it redesigned, but it didn't happen. We wouldn't have the problems with Metacritic you guys have, though. Isn't yeah, that like a. We don't know. We actually we translate to Metacritic better than any other outlet out there. Inter you think so with the five point? Our four and our five stars get colored green. Our three star gets colored yellow. Our one and our two get colored red. And do they? I don't care what other outlets give games and how we match up mm. with, on that scale, but our four and our five star reviews are favorable. Our three stars are like the, hmm, and then our one or two are like, hmm. Yeah. What would you think if, say, like some of the bigger sites did convert to five <clears throat> star, like with all of the weird, like messed up responsibility stuff that's happening with like publishers paying developers based on their Metacritic scores and stuff like that. Like, as, as reviewers, our duty is to the people that are interested in information about which games they want to buy. Mm. The, whatever the industry does behind that is something that a reviewer especially cannot concern themselves with. Uh, so, you know, like I think those deals are not necessarily great for developers and they should think twice about signing them. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's obviously, you know, they at some point want to do the deal and if that's, that's what they have to do, that's what they have to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, we, we have to serve the audience of people that trust us to be open and honest about uh, the quality of these games. Mm. Uh, so like, you know, Metacritic is the last thing I think about when, when doing this stuff. After the fact, I'll go look and go, oh, we're the lowest in Metacritic. Weird. Yeah. Why does everyone like this game so much? What the hell's wrong? I, I just look at it and go like, <laughs> these people are idiots and then move on. Um, <laughs> So Drive Club didn't get a 5 out of 5? No, it did not. Right. No, it did not. There was a very old school, uh, it was very like classic in a weird way of like having people uh, come at me over Drive Club. It's been a long time yeah. since anyone has. And um, it was kind of fun in a weird way. It was like, oh, how quaint. You people still do this. Weird. Oh, it's they like still the care. days eh. way back then. Yeah, well, that stuff was whatever. That, that was, I mean, that was like the stuff of like giving Zelda an 8.8 .8 and then Mario Sunshine, I gave an 8, yeah. which stirred up a similar thing. It was just like, it was like me and Alex just re, like getting emails and just laughing and just going like, what are these people? <laughs> yeah, okay, man, sure. Whatever. Okay. One, one of my favorite phenomenon that used to happen after, after Giant Bomb was created is, is I'd get a lot of messages saying, well, if the old GameSpot guys were still here, they'd never give Crisis... <laughs> Crisis 2 is, is, is a 10, it's five stars. It's like if the old, and it's like, have you seen the Giant Bomb review? <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me throw you yeah, over there. Send that one your way. And go so it, 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 that's always the, the, the strangest one where it's just like somehow the, I mean, but it's good. You, you kind of uh, go along and people kind of put you up on a little, little pedestal after a while. Yeah. It's like, oh, the, the good old days. Well, that happened right? with Destiny as well, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Similar kind of. Yeah, I mean, we like ended up response. actually like having the the exact same score on Destiny. Yeah. I, oh, I actually heard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, we gave it a three out of five, right? And so, you guys yeah. give it like a six zero, right? Yep. So mathematically, it's the same. Mathematically, score. it's exactly it, the same you know, thing. I guess. The math works out. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I actually didn't hear from anyone about Destiny yeah. uh, when when that review went up. It was very much like a. Yeah, I guess I can't really argue with that. I'm playing it and really like it, but yeah, those are all valid. I mean, the, the, a lot of the Drive Club reaction was that way too. It was uh, just Eric Tay who was complaining about Destiny. Well, whatever, they ruined assault rifles for him, so <laughs> I, I've actually yeah. been telling him today sorry, that he sorry, just I needs to never play that game ever again. Poor guy. Just like Bad and Dota. Great. Review for that coming up soon as well. Dota? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Free video games. One star. Uh, thanks very much for coming on. <laughs> That's, uh, I wonder when the next one will be, number nine. Any, Who any takers? Who knows? Uh, the I never the Tony like to play Hawk, the Tony Hawk reboot is going to do it. <laughs> uh, I'll Tony Hawk to Ride 2. Yeah, yeah. Um, Advanced Warfare. Uh, who, mm, who, maybe. I mean, anything, anything is knows? possible. Yeah. Any game can be awesome. Any game could be shit. Let's have the one conversation. We don't have just one one anymore. We have three ones. Well, I mean, you know, you're, also, you're also not I digging out. I think ones are more interesting. Yeah, you're not, you're not digging out uh, games from Walmart store shelves and stuff anymore <laughs> either. Like, yeah, they just show up on Steam now. All sorts of shit just shows oh, up yeah, wherever yeah. you I mean, need the, it. The flood of stuff on Steam is insane. Yep. Um, Craziness. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate sure. it. That's the show for this week. We done. Uh, Mary, do you have any idea what's on next week's show? No. Nope. All right, <laughs> tune into the lobby. Game's fun, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Adios. No more gym.